More than 60 years I've been spent behind stoves preparing recipes. From a simple dish to a Cote Bleu masterpiece, military cooks have built a solid reputation for themselves. I love the tree. Today we're prepping for a mess dinner. Working in a variety of locations and conditions, the cooks are out there preparing the first meal of the day, long before the troops put their feet on the ground. Over the years, the cooks have played a key support role, making a huge impact on the morale of the troops. The cooks' devotion to their work has never stopped growing along that road. More than 60 years of history are bringing the men and women of the trade to look at the past with pride. Proud to have made it all this way and still be here today fulfilling their mandate with strong ambitions, sharing those years of experience and taking this moment to set the table for the future. The history of food services, while common in many ways, has considerable differences in the way it is practiced in each of the three environments. Primitive armies lived under plunder pure and simple. They took whatever they needed as they passed through and collectively or individually within an organization based on group dynamics, they cooked what they found on open fires. The basis of field messing in the army initially was a ration of bread and cheese and the officer and soldier suffered a pay deduction for this dubious offering. It is worthy to note that by the early 1800s, the soldier's daily ration was one and a half pounds of bread or one pound of biscuit, one pound of meat, and a ration of wine or spirits. By 1812, there is some evidence that communal cooking was practiced to some extent since one mule was assigned to every company of infantry and to every troop of cavalry to carry the camp kettles. By the time of World War I, cooks were integral members of their units allocated to their duties by the unit commander. Too often, the chief qualification for a cook was his inaptitude or inability to qualify as a gunner, rifleman, clerk, or other, quote, useful, end quote, duty. During World War II, the Canadian Army gave the matter of catering more special attention. A group of catering specialists was formed in the Royal Canadian Army Service Corps, otherwise known as RSASC, utilizing former civilian experts such as chefs, butchers, bakers, hotel food supervisors, etc. While thought was given to creating a separate catering corps at the end of World War II, fiscal constraints conspired to leave things unchanged and the army cooks remained in the RSASC until it was disbanded upon the unification in 1968. The food services section within that directorate was responsible to provide advice regarding food services, food services equipment, and nutrition. Divided into three commands, namely Western, Central, and Eastern. Training of cooks at that time was carried out by Food Services Training Company of the RCASC School at Camp Borden. Although Army cooks had been trained in Borden for so many years and the rest of the cooks were trained at various places in Canada according to their environmental affiliation, since unification in 1968, all CF cooks have been trained in Camp Borden. It is interesting to know that during the period of 1946 to 1951, feeding the troops became an ever-increasing important matter. The recruiting of cooks was accorded number one priority from the enlisted standpoint, then called catering trades. The Corps' model, nil sin labor, nothing without labor, was a proud and fitting motto for a large brotherhood of soldiers. They never let the troops down. Just cooking itself, it's the only trade that I picked. Um, just because I love cooking. If you're on early shift, it's early. <laughs> you get up at four, 
You have to be on the floor in your whites for five. After that, you just uh, you work until quarter after one, then you go to PT, and then the rest of the day is yours. Right now, we have a shift of seven days on, uh, two off, and then three on, and then two off. So that means we get a, a weekend every second weekend. So if you have children, it works out better than some other schedules that we used to have. I like being on the floor, making uh, just the main meal. I like soups and sauces the best. I like doing rolls and stuff too, but um, I don't know, just if you have a look at those bombers, they're just so fun, all that food, you know? It's a lot of ingredients goes into it, and it's great. I like it. People are gonna be honest with you uh, if they don't like what you got to give them, but for the most part, a lot of people, especially when you're out in the field, and uh, that's, that's basically uh, the morale, is the food. And uh, you just offer them good food, and it just, they love it. It's a good trade because uh, it's an important job. You know, you're feeding a lot of people. And, and you know, food, everybody needs food. We're feeding uh, over 300 people right now for, for lunch. So we're probably, we're around 350. We got, we got steak on tonight with mushrooms and onions, with lasagna for pasta. Plus we got uh, Kise Jacques on for uh, also. I always loved to cook. Like I used to be a shorter cook in restaurants, many pancakes, and so I used to be a shorter cook, so I, I love cooking. I love the trade, long hours, but I still love the trade. It's just, uh, you get some of those days where, you know, you know, you're gonna make the day or you're not gonna make the day. You're gonna have good days, you're gonna have bad days, but I enjoy the trade. I have no problem with it. A typical day here? Well, for a start, we have to work long hours. On the other hand, the work is rewarding. This is the food industry, so the job involves a lot of working with your hands. Work begins at 6 o'clock in the morning and usually continues until closing at 7 o'clock, with a break in the afternoon. In the event there's a last minute change of plans, we always have something ready to serve. We only need a few minutes to prepare it, perhaps 20 or 30, the time it takes to heat it up and serve it. I enrolled in the armed forces in 1994. Before then, I took a civilian course and worked in hotels. I graduated from cooking school in Montreal in 1987 and chose the cook trade in the armed forces. First of all, it's a passion. Cooking is a passion. I was always passionate about it when I was a civilian, but I found life in the armed forces more interesting. Although it can be more challenging and demanding at times, if we're heading out on a mission, for example, it represented new challenges and new opportunities. I love the cooks. Anytime we can get a, uh, we can get a fresh meal out there, it's great. After living on IMPs for two weeks, you get a hot meal, it boosts your morale right up. Stow away as much food as you can, pack it all back, and you're good to go. I was cooking, I was assistant sous chef in a Wellington hotel in Winnipeg, and uh, liked it, enjoying it, having a good time, and worked in a couple of fast food places, and just wanted the experience of the Army, travel. This is definitely a typical kitchen we'd have in the field, yeah. We're feeding uh, 370 meals going out in hay boxes, and we're feeding approximately another 70 people in-house. I think just seeing the happy faces on the customers when we put out a good meal and when they tell us that they've never eaten food like this in the field and you know just the satisfaction of their happy full stomachs. We definitely work long long hours you know 3.30 to 7 is a long day um, but we get a lot of satisfaction as well from the guys when they're happy and they're you know as long as as long as the days are long and people are happy it's, a, it's always good for us I think we're always happy so. It's a great experience for young people out there and uh, lots of hard work. Most about being a cook, the job itself. And I love to cook, it's great. I'd recommend trade, yes, to anybody. It's no great. regrets? No regrets whatsoever. Hot meal is a hot meal. It's our breakfast is our joy of the day. Is that right? Get up in the morning, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It's good for morale. It's good for morale. In the artillery, we have some of the best cooks. Typically, they're located on the gun lines and are able to provide rations to the troops, fresh rations to the troops, almost on a 24-hour basis, depending on their work schedules. You can say that the cooks uh, provide a bit of morale, certainly on the gun line and in some pretty uh, uh, austere conditions, be it either here in Shiloh where it's snowing in the middle of May or in Bosnia. If there's bad food, then there's bad morale. Good food, good morale. I never really thought I'd actually would be going to cook, but, uh, but I just uh, found out that I have a it's just a real fun thing to do. Uh, I get to experiment with quite a few things. There's lots of other things like cakes. I can bake cakes, uh, muffins, cookies. Well, I like bake shops mainly, but 
sometimes you get like warning orders that there's like going to be an extra hundred people like a uh, good hour before the meal is supposed to be served. Then you just uh, have to learn how to improvise. You know? Every job is really challenging in its own ways. You just have to uh, learn how to learn how to adapt, and then you surprise be surprised what people can do in the, when they're put under pressure. Right now I'm on a Class B contract and for full time, full time, and. Uh, I'm having a real fun time with anybody who really just had to have a real positive attitude. I was a cook in the civilian trade and uh, I wanted to join the army. I wanted to be in the forces and when I applied they offered me a cook's position. So I said, let's go for it. I was cooking in a civilian, and I decided to cook military too. Very happy about my choice. It's a trade that you're always gonna be uh, working hard, and you're always creating. So you're gonna create meals, you're gonna create, and you're gonna cre create morale too. You're gonna help, you're gonna make people happy. You're gonna, you're gonna feed them and make, and so it's a, it's a contact, it's human contact, and it's, it's a hard working job, which is uh, gratifying. Presently, as we speak today, we're feeding 1,138 people per meal. People here come from across Canada. There's no specific recipe or meal that they like more than another. So it, it varies. Like our diners varies, our meals varies. Everything's delicious and one day you're going to have pastas, one next day you're going to have pizza. You want to eat healthy, you're going to go to a salad bar. You've got a lot of choices here. So you've got too many choices to pin it down to one. You're always making somebody happy. You're always making them happy. They're looking forward to coming and eat their meal. They're sitting in class or working out or, or doing a march, and what they're, they're, they're there, they're tired. What do they want? They want to eat, you know? So you're gonna make them happy and you, you're gonna make sure that your meal is gonna be good because you wanna make them happy. And that's gratifying. That's what's fun about really the, the, the big highlight, the fun of the job is to make people happy and you're filling their tummy and they're, they come here and they, they're smiling. They had a Rough day, but they're gonna have a good meal. And what do you think about the cooks? They're great. They're really nice, yeah. Why? Why's that? They're really friendly, they always say hi to you. In my personal opinion, what makes a good cook is, uh, is a person that's determined, a person that wants. You gotta want, and you gotta, you gotta have drive, motivation. It's a challenging job, but it's a very gratifying job. So basically, just want. You wanna be, you can. Well, this is a new MKT kitchen trailer for the field. It's a prototype. What we usually have to do is get right underneath the kitchen trailer, unhook the support, and then unhook the leg so we can bring it down and hook it up. This one, it's different. You have a little clip here that's, that the leg is clipped onto. When you pull on it, the leg comes down and locks into place. The only thing you have to do is just put this cutter pin in and it's all done. One of this is really great because you don't have to get underneath the kitchen and get all dirty. The new things about it is the white uh, sheet, the, the walls and on the ceilings. It's a great thing, it's clearer, it's brighter, it looks more sanitized, it's easier to put up. They put new lightings in front instead of just in the middle. The vents easier to open. The ovens, the stoves, they're diesel burners, 52,000 BTUs. They hold four gallons of fuel. They run for four hours. They have to have 24 volts of electricity. You can put uh, 110 power with a converter inside the cabinet that converts the power to 24 volts. The only thing about them is that they're very loud. They put a thermostat on the ovens thing is very great, it's great, it's useful, but it's in the way when packing up. It sticks out too much. The stoves, they put shelving in it. You can take out, you can put the rack for the 60 quart pot, no problem. About these shelving, you can put a large pan, two small pans, you can put a sheet in it. It's really adjustable, it's great. The other thing they did about these stoves, is they, for the 60 quart pot racks, they put ball bearings on them. They did, what they did about these cabinets also, they put them push 
push out. You just pull the pin in. And when you want them pushed back in, you pull the pin out and you push them back in. The thing about this is all the wiring is all in front and it gets caught into the, the bottom of the plate. What they added also is plugins on top here. For boiling water or heating up something really fast, they're great because it's direct heat and it's hotter. As brightness and it's fun to have the cabinets back, it gives you more room, not leg room, but a little bit more elbow room, it's great.